Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Hi MSematics, happy to see you here. Today we have a very interesting, I would say like a relaxed and quick algebra question. In the same way, this is a very tricky question. So we have x cubed equal to x minus 1 to the third power and you need to find our x. You can also write your solution down into the comment section and we will check our answers here in just few minutes. It will be really interesting. So a lot of students might be saying, okay, we have on both sides, we have the third power. So maybe we can, we can apply right here the third root of x to the third power and on the right side we can do the same thing so we can apply the third root of x minus 1 x minus 1 to the third power so each into nothing we apply uh, uh, cubes root on the left side and cubes root on the right side of course we can easily cancel these three right here and right here and as a result as you can see we have x on the left side equal to x minus 1 x minus 1 and from here a lot of students say okay let's subtract x from both sides and we have looks like 0 0 equal to minus 1. And a lot of students at this point, at this moment, there are a lot of students are confused, arguing with each other, how is it possible, how can we find our, our roots? And then I ask them, okay, do you know about fundamental theorem of algebra? Because you know right here we have the third power. So according to fundamental theorem of algebra, saying like in simply words, we have three roots in total. We don't know how many real number roots, how many complex roots, but at least three roots. Real number, complex number, we don't know about it. So as you can see right here, we, we don't find any roots right here so right now let's try to find another approach how can we do this and i recommend you this one so let me just separate this part and let's continue it right here so x cubed we have on the left side let's do this and on the right side let's raise this x minus one to the third power according to a formula we have x cubed x cubed minus 3x square minus 3x square plus 3x plus 3x and minus 1 according to a, a formula and right now if you look closely we have x cube on the left side and x cube on the right side it's really great so we can easily cancel this x cube from both sides what expression do we have right now we have this one so let's do this but let's change position let's write it on the left side so we have minus 3x square plus 3x plus 3x and minus 1 minus 1 equal to 0. Right now, of course, we we don't like this minus, we, we don't like this negative sign uh, near this coefficient of x square. So let's multiply both sides by minus 1 or divide or multiply that doesn't matter in our case. So as a result, what do we have? We have 3x square, 3x square minus 3x minus 3x and plus 1. And right now let's look closely from another perspective. Right here we have the quadratic equation. So it looks like right here we will have two roots according to a basic knowledge of a square root, uh, basic knowledge of quadratic equation. Second power, it means two roots in total according like the same fundamental theorem of algebra. So right now let's write all of our coefficients. First of all we have a equal to 3. I want to explain to you in simpler words, maybe a lot of students watch my videos, so we have b equal to minus 3 and c equal to 1. And we're gonna apply of course our, our discriminants. So Let's do this right now. D equal to, what do we have? Our basic formula, b square minus 4ac, you know, equal to, we have b square minus 3 square minus 4 times a times 3 and times times 1. And as a result, what do we have? A lot of students are confused about this point right here. So we have, we have a 9 minus we have right here 12 so we have uh, our discriminant is also negative and then at this point is like the second time after this one a lot of students are confused the discriminant is negative what are we going to do with it how can we find our roots and i say okay discriminant is negative okay no real roots but maybe two complex roots let's see what will happen so let's plug in this uh this discriminant each of these coefficients into this spot let's see what will happen so x first and second equal to we have minus b plus minus square root of d and all over all over to a. Let's do this. So we have minus b minus minus 3 plus minus square root of discriminants of square root of minus 3. And we divide all of this stuff by, by 2a, by 2 times 2 times 3. Let's simplify this a little bit. As a result, what do we have? We have minus minus 3. We have 3 plus minus. Here it's really great moment to split this to write this minus 3 as uh, minus 1 times 3 so we have minus 1 minus 1 times 3 and we divide all of the thing by by 6 2 times 3 right now let's let's remember a really great property a really great rule uh, this rule looks like that when we have square root of x times y we can write it as square root of x times square root of y so we can easily split it okay it's really important rule in our case let's do this so let's apply this rule as a result we have 3 
plus minus right here what do we have square root of minus one as i told before and times square root of three and all over all over six really great what are we gonna do next of course we're gonna write instead of this square root of minus one we're gonna write our imaginary unit because in terms of real numbers there is no way square root of minus one equal to some real value these are a complex unit imaginary units so of three plus minus i square root of three and all over all over six and uh, how can we simplify this first of all let's mm, let's divide our numerator by six it simplifies us a lot as a result we can easily split it write it as three over six plus minus i square root of three over over six right now three over six this is our one half to be honest yeah and this is our one half one half plus minus i square root of three over over six and the, the final tricky move you don't need it actually but it's really important for our case maybe you have another answer in your option and you, your answer it's not look the same as the answer in your option so we can easily multiply both numerator and denominator by square root of three okay we can easily do this by square root of three and as a result we have one half plus minus i instead of this square root of three square root of three uh, we're gonna multiply it we have three in our numerator and in our denominator we have six times square root of three six times square root of three and of course this three and this six we can easily cancel by by two as a result we have the next one we have equal to let's do this we have one half plus minus instead of this uh, numerator we have only i and in our denominator we have two square root of three to square root of three and right now we can easily see this from another perspective because right now we can easily see that we have two roots and we can write approximately our answer and i'm going to explain a few words after this after this answer so let's do this so our answer if you look closely in a lot of times x first is real root but in our case we don't have real root so x x is not is not real real we don't have real number root in our case in our case we have x first equal to equal to one half let's go with the plus sign so one half plus i over two square root of three and x second equal to one half minus i over two square root of three these both roots are complex roots okay complex complex roots and few words about this answer because you know when we when we do this thing bef uh, in uh, the beginning so right here okay we just wanted to uh, take uh, apply uh, the third root on both sides and this is a correct thing in terms of math i agree with it this is a correct you can easily do this but in our case this is really interesting moment right now because we don't have like our x x we can cancel and right now a lot of students forget about a fundamental theorem of algebra but right now i want to mention one really interesting moment you can easily solve this question like that you can easily do this but only for inspection method if you want to see a real number root real quick quickly you can easily do this with this with this method you know but in our case we don't have real number root and you know we can't uh, we can't uh, guess that we right here uh, that we don't have right here solutions at all we don't have real number but we maybe have complex number so with this solution it's also really great to see another side another side of this question right now we can see a graph you can see these points of intersection you can see this Two complex solution we don't have real number uh, we don't, don't have a point of intersection in terms of in terms of real numbers so i really hope you understand this explanation a few few tricky moves right here of course here's our question from the beginning okay we had right here in the beginning what we had we had x cube equal to x minus one x minus one cube of course we can easily cancel it but don't forget about fundamental theorem of algebra and of course we have maybe with the force power we have x to the force equal to x minus one to the four something like that like a completely the same question but with different powers of course you can easily cancel right here four and right here you can easily do this but don't forget about complex numbers because when because when you cancel this power you forget a little bit about complex solutions okay right here we have at least at least at least four roots okay at least four roots we don't know how many real numbers how many complex number right here we have at least three roots so don't forget about it with this canceling you will have only one so this is extremely important part in terms of math try to factory try to open parentheses try to raise this parentheses to the fourth power on the left side grouping yeah you know everything uh, with uh, with basic uh, with basic algebra concepts will help you will help you a lot so this is my explanation to this question a little bit long but i guess you understand 
understand it. If this is like step-by-step -step explanation for a lot of students who, who want to learn something in mass, I really appreciate you and I really appreciate you watching my, my videos. It's, it's, it's extremely important. So uh, also write a question down into the comment section. What do you think about it? Write your, write your notes about this question. Maybe a lot, a lot of teachers, a lot of students watch my videos, right? What do you think about this type of question? How many percent of students forget about it? They just cancel in and they forget about complex numbers. But as you can see, we have we have two roots with this cancel and we have we have maybe one maybe not not roots right here because we forget about complex with this canceling we forget about complex part which is extremely important thing in terms of math so thank you for your time wish you all the best in your life you can also write your response write your notes down into the comment section and take care of yourself have a great day and see you in the next videos